Now joining us, courtesy of Sinking Alpha, is Fred McClymans, head of equity research at Samadhi Partners and author of Perspectives on Tech. Fred, thank you so much for joining us. We know Amazon is trying to revive the very industry it broke down, brick and mortar. And we're hearing news now that the company is having a little bit of trouble with these Amazon Go stores. Is this a worry for you? You know, uh, first off, uh, it's a pleasure to be here this morning uh, with you. Uh, yes, Amazon uh, this morning it reported, or it's being reported, that they've had a little bit of difficulty with their Amazon Go project, which is uh, probably best thought of as sort of a 7-Eleven killer. Uh, the idea of having a uh, somewhat uh, autonomous store where shoppers can uh, go in, pick things off the shelf, uh, shop, uh, kind of browse around, throw things into their cart and then walk out, you know, uh, with the complete payment transaction uh, automated for them. So uh, apparently they've delayed the start of this uh, a bit. Uh, they were supposed to go live uh, momentarily here and they've pushed that off. Uh, we don't have any idea how long the delay will be, um, but this really isn't that unexpected because what you're really dealing with here is a lot of pretty new technology. And getting that tech mix right is going to be critical for Amazon in this space. Yeah, I was going to ask you if you were expecting this to kind of happen. You say, you say no. So will this at all damage Amazon in the near term from, uh, I guess, a technology brand perspective? Or are people just going to write this off as, yeah, you know, these things take time? Well, I, I think the naysayers will certainly uh, take a, an opportunity to poke at Amazon here. But uh, if you think of it in the, the bigger sense, um, the value proposition of Amazon, especially from an investment perspective, is really focused on AWS, its cloud service offering. And while retail is you know, by far the overwhelming you know, largest segment of its uh, revenue source, uh, it's not that critical to its uh, financial performance. So in this particular case, I think the interesting thing is that they are taking the time to get it right because the potential here is phenomenal for Amazon not just in the ability to actually roll out uh, you know, increasingly larger stores offering a variety of, of products and services, but I think more than anything else, this really serves as a showcase for Amazon's technology. And in fact, long term, I, I wouldn't be surprised to see uh, you know, this particular type of, of push to be something that has a limited scope uh, on the front end and on the back end ends up being sort of a marketing model for Amazon to find ways to partner with other uh, retail providers in the brick and mortar space to move their technology and their back end operations uh, into uh, into a larger market opportunity. Fred, this stock is near an all time high and shareholders are just consistently rewarded this particular stock of late. But at what point do, are, do they get concerned or at what point are the worries, are worries justified that maybe Amazon is dipping its toe into too many things at once? Well, you know, Amazon certainly is, uh, is expanding into a number of areas, but you know, from an investment perspective, one of the things that we're very positive on with Amazon is its ability to leverage its existing infrastructure and move into adjacent markets. Uh, you know, a really good example of this uh, is the push that they've had of late to move into logistics and commercial shipping. Uh, they needed that capability internally. They've started to build out uh, uh, an Amazon air fleet. Uh, they've started to put in place distribution hubs on a global scale. And you know, what that really does is it allows them to operate their business more efficiently. And then the second part of that is it actually offers them the ability to actually use the infrastructure that they've created to offer services for others. Um, so I think they're approaching things in the right way here. Uh, and certainly like uh, you know, most mega companies today, they have their moonshots, mm -hmm. uh, but they're also pretty good about fast failing those when they don't work. Uh, but from a concern perspective, you know, again, the real investment uh, prop of Amazon uh, isn't necessarily in the retail, it's in AWS, which uh, accounts for the overwhelming uh, you know, majority of their uh, margins. So, you know, unless there's a slip in AWS and increased com competition from other sources, um, we're still pretty positive on AWS or on and Amazon. <laughs> Uh, Fred, I want to bounce a couple of ideas off of you that you sort of mentioned as well and we were talking about earlier in the show. So with this rollout now sort of being delayed, um, I can't help but think that maybe there is also another reason that they are trying to figure out the, the strategy of using these as mini warehouses, distribution centers for their Amazon Prime eventually. Um, and then one idea that you just sparked in my head as well is, why doesn't Amazon just partner with existing 7-Elevens or existing grocery stores, chains, to help them build out their infrastructure to make them more efficient? Why would they want to do this on their own? 
Well, you know, to the first point, uh, it's certainly possible that they're taking a little bit of time to, uh, to figure out how best to offer some of the back-end functionality into the service. Um, but they've demonstrated pretty consistently that they've got a very good handle on that. Um, so I don't necessarily see there being sort of a, a back-end logistics issue. Uh, in fact, if anything, uh, we're very positive on the idea of Amazon using their distribution centers on a larger scale and serving not just Amazon uh, clients, but serving third-party clients uh, as well. Um, but from sort of an expansion perspective in the stores, uh, yes, they could strike a deal with, uh, with a 7-Eleven, but I think that really sells Amazon's potential short. What we're really seeing here is you know, a basic brick and mortar model that um, is fundamentally broken. Whether you're talking about uh, you know, the small convenience store uh, or you're talking about the big box store, uh, you know, look at the challenges that uh, you know, companies like Sears are, are facing. That yep. basic model is no longer working in the digital era. So they've taken a, an approach that says, look, we're gonna, we're gonna let this break a bit and uh, we're going to find a way to reinvent in particular segments. So I think they're approaching it the right way. Uh, it, once this technology is proven, and once they've demonstrated that it can actually function you know, on a 24, uh, seven by 365 basis, uh, I would certainly expect them to start to move that technology through partnership into other areas. Fred, we won't get earnings from this company for about another month or so, but we know Jeff Bezos, now the third richest person in the world, according to Forbes' latest ranking system based on 2016 numbers. A lot of that helped by shares that he owns of Amazon, a company that he runs. Let's zone in more on the AWS component. Of course, revenue-wise, this is not the biggest revenue generator for the company, but when it comes to profits, actually it is. And this is a place where the company can be profitable. There have been times where people have asked whether or not it makes sense to spin out AWS. What's your thought on that? You know, uh, regarding spinning out AWS, uh, I like it exactly where it is right now. Uh, and, and I believe that there's a, a lot of synergy between uh, what AWS is doing and what uh, Amazon's retail operations are, are bringing to the table. You know, from a revenue perspective, you're, you're right. In 2016, uh, AWS was only about 12 billion in revenue. But looking forward to uh, 2020, we're projecting some very significant revenue growth, probably close to about 69 billion for AWS alone. Talk about some of the innovations that might come from AWS because we know that this is where most tech companies are going now, trying to figure out what their cloud strategy is. How can Amazon compete against Google and Microsoft in this way, given that they have such a head start ahead of these guys? Well, I don't think that it's necessarily a case of, uh, of Amazon having to compete as much as it is maintain their lead moving forward. And if you look at uh, you know, what Google is doing in the cloud, if you look at what Microsoft is doing, um, there are some, some basic differences in terms of the target markets that they're going after. Uh, but one thing I will say about Amazon and cloud, um, they are starting to move into more of the enterprise application space. Uh, they're starting to, uh, you know, uh, services like Chime, uh, that would be a potential uh, work competitor of uh, Skype uh, and some of the Microsoft uh, Office functions. Uh, they're moving in that right direction. Uh, I, I think it's more important that they really leverage their infrastructure capabilities uh, forward and they seem to be executing very well on that. We don't see uh, you know, Microsoft, uh, IBM, uh, or Google catching up anytime soon. All right, Fred McClyman's head of equity research at Sam Samadhi Partners. Thank you so Samadhi much for joining Partners. us. My pleasure.